Okay, start. Well, this is four years. Okay, this start. This is four years this. later. But okay, save. This right. is four years later. This is four years later. This is my <laughs> first dorm. You can pan. This is where I stayed freshman year on the third floor. Uh, my window is right there. It's covered up with leaves. It's on the third floor over the door. Uh, and uh, that was four years ago. And today I'm gra or tomorrow I'll be graduating. Okay. Okay. Jim, hasta luego. Eres tan basta. Yeah. It's and I also ate there, and I worked there in the dining room. Yeah. Okay. No, sure. Huh? We have a little guillotine, mouse guillotine. No way. Yeah. Me and Jael. Oh, 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 oh. Go! No. What movie was that? <laughs> We're standing in front of the Biological Science Building. This is where I spent most of my life here in Miami. Uh, as you can see, there's Miami University uh, was established in 1809. And uh, this is one of the newest buildings on campus. It's only uh, five, four years old. It was completed the year that I came here as a freshman. And now we'll go inside and i show you what I do. I thought he was going to be the best. There he is. Um, this is where they keep all the live animals. Who wants me in or out? I'm not sure. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Go ahead, no, come on, everybody. What? Where are your Come on, Ed. These are the mice. These are the mice rooms. And uh, these are everyone's mice. And, and these are the mice that I was working with. They're my names around here. Or, yeah. And uh, these are all normal mice that I just haven't had time to do anything to them yet. And right here, a couple of mice... Sounds that, like he's going to come back and do it. Right. <laughs> and then right here, a couple of mice that we injected with some uh, loose lung carcinoma, which is a cancer. Whoa. And it looks like they look pretty normal. Where'd you put it? Put it in their right leg. Well, I don't know if I want to start feeling this leg right now. Yeah. It'll like chew on you a little bit. Yeah. These mice are pretty vicious. Yeah, these are the black ones. See, everyone else works with the other mice. I took a little poop on my hand. I don't know, I, I can't, I can't feel anything. Oh. Yes. And yeah, and see. The reason he's losing the skin is it keeps crawling, or his hair keeps crawling in and out of these things right here for his food. They yeah, like to the live right there. Hmm? Right in here, he keeps crawling in through those metal things to get the food. But, uh, here, Mom, you want to play with him? No. Huh? Are you sure? Yes. He's cute. Huh? No, she's not. Actually, she's not a poor girl at all. She uh, she doesn't look like she's gonna get anything. So how long has it been since she checked? Uh, Four twenty-nine. Is it possible that you you injected her and she won't be sick? Yeah. Oh no. Looks like. Yeah, it looks like. Oh, I love you then. Look. We sit in the Then I love you. Please fight it. How do you know it's a sheep? I don't know, I cannot address sweetheart. I'm sorry, it's just a joke. <laughs> it is a female though. It is, they are sheep. I was just wondering how you know. Alright, what if she was in your apartment? What would you do then? I would have let her out. Uh, Remember the one? They have a little one. Yes. Remember? Four. Ah, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I can put it back. Yeah. 
put it, but she looks pretty normal. It's been normal. Actually, I put two different concentrations. That one I put 10 to the fifth. The next one, this guy, I put in 10 to the sixth. So I put 10 times more into this guy. And his right leg looks pretty normal to me. He'll try to bite me if I throw it down. Hey, Robert, you put it in here. syringes we inject them with. Um, let's see. All around here, um, right here are the scales. They're really sensitive um, to measure stuff out. Electronic scales. Um, the way your signature on the one on the right. Mm, it's that sensitive. sensitive. Yep. I'd like to see how much your signature was. Mm -hmm. Um, you could probably do this tour better than I could. <laughs> You've been in here a lot longer, but uh, let's see. These these things are kind of cool. Uh, they're called genie vortexers, and when you press down on it, it spins whatever you have in suspension. It like if you, if it settles down, this will mix it all up, so it's nice and evenly distributed throughout the fluid. Um, what are you doing in the exhaust ports? In there, actually, we don't work in those, um, but we have other ones that we work in. That's when you want to be absolutely sterile. Mm -hmm. but only like this, or maybe you have some. You are working with well, some kind of bacteria, or well, see, or actually, genes? that's that's a flow. That's not a laminar flow. That's for chemical. Yeah. And, and we do some radioisotope work. Mm -hmm. Radioactive yeah. stuff. I I've never that's worked in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I installed a couple of those in bioscience building in um, in the State University. In the Bowling Green? Bowling Green University. No, it's at HVAC. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you know what's, what's going on with that then? I put it in after we built the building. Mm -hmm. They were very happy. It only cost them about $20,000 to put it in. Because it had to go four floors with the... Mm -hmm. Conducting, mm -hmm. and then it has to have a, a motor up yeah. the top to push mm -hmm. to pull it all out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Water but it seems to work real well. Yeah. Because yeah. in the uh, Bowling Green University, they didn't work at all. And yeah. mm -hmm. 
cells what you can do is you can run it through this machine and it'll tell them their it'll tell their size uh, oh. and their um, and what kind of cells and what kind of cells there how many does it do per second 10,000 it will count in usually a few seconds it'll count 10,000 cells there's a very small needle under here and it pat and it takes up cells one cell at a time and it and it puts it through this chamber there's a laser that bounces light off of the cell and there's a chamber that detects the the angle and all that at which the light bounces and it all records it and you get a printout of all the cells each cell is like a dot on this printout i don't know if jeff has any but uh and they're they're categorized according to their weight and what kind of cell it is and i mean not their size what kind of cell it is and they can do 10,000 per second, and it, like, so it's it's an amazing kind. Of, it's a really amazing machine. And this is print off. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, this is backwards. Each one of those dots mm -hmm. would be would correspond cell. to one cell, mm -hmm. and you can see it counted 10,000 of them, mm -hmm. and then it distributes them here according to how bright they glow. We stick a die on the surface, mm -hmm. and that's what the machine is counting, mm -hmm. is whether, first of all, whether there's a cell, and then whether or not it glows. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, a plot that tells you how many mm -hmm. of them glowed this little bit, or more, mm -hmm. or very brightly. And what we want is a lot of them glowing very brightly. Mm -hmm. There we've got some. You can see <coughs> there, there are some of the cells we're actually looking for in that population. And then it prints it out and tells us what percentage falls in each of these categories. It's a fun little toy. Yeah. It only costs us $100,000. Okay, <laughs> and we have, there's a person that's basically on that, that like the major part of her job, from what I understand, is, is working on this, uh, on this machine because there's just so much to know. Yeah, just uh, to operate on this machine, yeah. you have to be very educated. Yeah. Um, and over there, that's a, that's a uh, centrifuge. Uh -huh. It's a swinging bucket centrifuge, and it has its own uh, refrigerator because when, when it swings, you know, it makes friction with the air, so it has to have a refrigerator in it. It's heating up. Yeah, so we, it has a refrigerator in it, and we usually uh, keep it at 4 degrees Celsius is where I usually spun my cells down. So it needs to cool down, and then I put my cells in there, and it spins them down. It takes about 10 minutes at... 1200 RPM, and that's slow. It'll go up to 4500 4, 4, RPM. All right. Um, I don't know. I think. I think. That, oh, there's an obvious. Oh, <laughs> telephone call. Somebody thinks we're here. Yeah. Hello. Um, Hi. How are you? Good. This. Uh, this is we're where I count all my cells. Doing a tour in the lab. And uh, basically, the basic thing is how many cells are alive and how many cells are dead. And I just sit under the microscope and I look in here and I count live and dead cells. And then that way I know what percentage viability I have so I can inject it or purify it some more. And uh, we've had some problems with viability. So, I don't know, that's something that needs to get worked out. I think that's pretty much it for this lab. That's, well, actually, right here. This is a laminar flow hood, okay. and it blows out clean air over the work 
the work area, which is right under here. Yeah. Pulls it in through the top. Of it. I see. It it mm -hmm. I see. You can yeah. show her the one back in the back room too. It's yeah. A little more sophisticated. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely show that one. And um, basically, what we do is we come here, we wash the bench, and we turn it on. And uh, we let it go for uh, half an hour. You can smell the air that's been sitting there for a long time. And we let it go for half an hour to make sure that the air is completely pure. And then we start working under here. And if you're working under here, you can be pretty safe that it, nothing in the air will contaminate your whatever you're working with. Okay. So it's not protecting you, it's protecting whatever you are. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, it's, yeah. Because usually exhaust food is protecting the person who is right, working. Right, right. Okay, now this is really neat. Uh, this is a liquid nitrogen container where we keep all of our frozen cells. Yeah. And we can keep them in there indefinitely. Yeah. And you got to oh. be real careful. Because it's really cold. It's really cold. And minus 90. One, oh, oh. Minus 100 what? 96. How come the the freezer only goes, the, when it freezes them, the needle only goes down to about 70 or 80 on there? And that's when the freeze is over. But you can't think. It's supposed to go about a minus 120 or so, and then we just finish it off from here. Maybe it does. Maybe I just don't remember. Okay. And here's all the, all of these little boxes have cells in them. And here's Dr. Stevenson for one of his. Okay. We just rest it in here. And I wonder if I remember which one I put in. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and you can see it, these are all the cells. I think this, these are them. Yeah. How long you can keep it open without uh, damaging the process? Yeah, a little slow. This is on the top one. And each one of these has about 10 to the 8th cells, which is about, what, 100 million? Each one of these little vials has 100 million cells in it. And we have all different kinds of stuff all through here. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Is I disconnect this tube from the refrigerator? That's a big refrigerator, basically. And uh, I connect, connect this this machine to here. And what this machine does is it takes the cell, it takes the cells, it freezes them. This machine uh, freezes in a specific. It, it, it's pro. It's electronically programmed to uh, raise and lower the temperature until the cells are frozen, so that the cells aren't damaged. Because you have to freeze them in a specific way; um, otherwise, they won't make it when you defrost them again. And when we defrost them, we just take them out of there and put them in some uh, 37 degree water, shake it a little bit, and they're good to go. It takes about three minutes. It takes about an hour to freeze them because it has to vary the temperature. Okay. A flow hood. Um, and it has fluorescent light, which is just your ag average light. Okay. And it also has on there what we do is when we come in here, we'll once again wipe down everything under there and. Uh, how does this go? How does this thing lower? I don't know. But what we don't, you don't need to lower it. And what we do is we'll just turn on the. Now this is ultraviolet light. Uh huh. And what it does is it sterilizes everything in here. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can, you know, we can be 100% sure. But once, you know, once we start working, we turn on the regular light. We don't work with the ultraviolet light because it's obviously dangerous. Yeah. Okay? Yeah.
But you see, in small portions, looks like ultraviolet lights are good for you. At purification, this this water is very very pure. Or actually, I should probably turn it on. It's on standby, but. Anyway, whenever we need really clean water. I know, he is pretty inquisitive. They were driving around the we kept Richmond Heights yeah. trying to open with our uh, garage opener. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody's garage. <laughs> this is just your typical yeah, lab. Something you have to do. That's right. That's right. Um, you have all, all of your setups here. Now, they're set up right now to do work with bacteria. They work mainly with bacteria in this lab because they have, this is the... Um, yeah, this is a stain. This is the like the bot, the one thing. If you're a microbiologist, you know how to stain bacteria. This is the Gram stain, and uh, it basically has four ingredients. And you just go, boom, boom. You put this on, then you wash it off. Put this on, wash it off. Put this and that, and then you're ready to look at bacteria under uh, a microscope. And uh, there are all your microscopes. Uh, there's the hood. All the, we all have to wear coats, lab coats. And those are, I think one is a cooler and one is a warmer. Right. One is at 37 degrees Celsius and the other one is uh, four. Yeah. And they're walk-in coolers. You just walk in and then shelves all around you put stuff up. And I've uh, also spent quite a few time in time in these lab. Well, send me your address when you get it. Okay. So I can get in touch with you. I definitely will. Okay. Thanks. Are you good? Sure. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Barry. First of all, this this building and in, and much of this camp. This building and much of this. Did you do all the filming with Cap on? I could see what I, I'm doing. Um, this this <laughs> now building. You say that. And much of the campus was in uh, the movie. Uh, what was that movie with, uh, with the little kid genius? Uh, with the little boy genius. It was recent to this. Yeah, movie. With yeah, I rem yeah, I don't remember the name of the movie. It was Fred. Here? Yeah, it was filmed at Miami. Oh. And uh, that that's the upper marches right there. Yeah. And under those arches, there's a legend saying that if you kiss somebody at midnight under those arches, that you're going to get married to them. Okay? That's Would it. that be home alone? No, no. Oh. Um. This is the student union. It's... Uh, it's called, it's called, uh, I call, the students call it the res because that's what it was called uh, before, that's what it was called uh, before Pat Sh uh, Shriver, Dr. Shriver, and they named the building after him, they call it the, Sh the Shriver Center, but all the students who want to be cool still call it the res. It has in it uh, ballrooms, meeting rooms, um, student offices like the yearbook uh, and uh, downstairs it has a cafeteria, a very nice one and uh, this is where all the students meet. They have two stores, two bookstores in there and it's basically like the central meeting place on this campus. It's a, it, this is the building on campus and they just renovated it last year and it looks, it looks beautiful inside and we're going to be there tomorrow for the Dean's List dinner that we're going to before graduation. With me. Okay, we're we're now approaching the artsy type, the artsy kind of area on campus. As you can see, if you pan to the left, that that's the same building, the res. And uh, see, they rebuilt it. They put a nice design, that's modern architecture design on it. Um, and then to my right. That's uh, the ceramics building and where some of the architecture students work. And straight ahead of me is the art, that's the art building. Oh, let's go back out. Can you hear me? Okay. Straight ahead of the art building. And uh, we're going to, if you shut the tape off for a second, then.
markers back there just for all the stitch. Okay, this is called the proctor's table right here. Um, the one hanging up on the wall is uh, in memoriam. It's been the proctor's table for, I think, 20 years. What does it mean, proctor? Not, it, to me, it means nothing. It's, a proctor is somebody that watches over you. It's just, it, it, that's what they've called it, the proctor's table, oh, okay? Yeah. And uh, as you can see, there's some pop and hot dog and some pretzel sticks up there and some fish. And it's all, this is like a joke. Uh, because there's this old, really old couch here, and and now they got now they renovated and got a brand new piece of wood. That everybody everybody signed it. Yeah, here? everybody writes on it. Everybody signs on it. What is your signature? Uh, see, this is mostly like the music, like nerds kind of people, you know. Yeah. And I, you know. You're cool. You're yeah. not a nerd. Well, not not that. It's just that they all hang. They live here. I mean, I'm surprised there's nobody here right now, because uh, they basically live here. Yeah, but let us sign and everybody. Can we sign it? Um, well, we don't have time. But okay. uh, now let's let's while the cameras are rolling, let's go to the to a practice room. Okay. And I might have a key that will open one of the rooms. Um, all around here are rooms with upright pianos. Anybody can practice in the upright piano. There's a couple open right here. Really? Okay. I think I think this will work. I think this should work though. And uh, all along the inside are grand pianos. And only the piano, piano uh, majors or minors get a key to these rooms, and they have grand pianos in them. And uh, <laughs> and uh, they they're open. But you can if you can get in the building like I just did, you can practice the piano basically. So you can use them anytime mm -hmm. you want. And uh, this is where I spend the other half of my life, break, just break. practicing the piano. My, you said. <laughs> plays the the piece that I wrote for theory class sophomore year. No, let's start at the beginning. Beginning is here. Okay.
guys want to sell it. Yeah. That's right. They're, they're, selling, they're selling a baby grand piano. <laughs> <laughs> well, come over and play, and I'll get to hear you. <laughs> yeah. He already has just two pianos. He two? needs another. Yeah, you need one to carry with you as you right. go around places. Right. That'd be good. No, but um, are you going to be in your office at all over the summer? Because I'm going to come down and play a recital over the summer. Great. Yeah. I want to come. Yeah. yeah. The other day when you called, you said, well, I've got to go to my piano jury and so forth. I was so busy, I couldn't go. Yeah. And I felt bad because I wanted to hear you play. Oh, yeah? yeah. Actually, I, I did all right. It was, it wasn't bad. I'm you sure should, you did. You get, like, really nervous, but you got to keep it in perspective. And what I always tell myself is I'm a microbiologist. This doesn't matter. I'm a microbiologist. This doesn't matter. And it kind of takes the pressure off. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. 